Chair, you are now live. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Councillor Joseph Hales. Welcome to the Grants Advisory Committee uh, meeting 28th of August 2020. Um, I'm going to go for a quick roll call for uh, the members of the public watching. Aaron, um, would you just kindly introduce all the uh, members? Uh, yes, good morning. Thank you, Chair. Um, just before I get around to that, I'm just going to uh, say that we have a apology from Councillor Daunton today. Um, Councillor Handley is uh, stepping in in her place. Um, but members, I will read out your name. Please could you confirm that you're present and remember to unmute your microphones before you speak. Uh, Councillor Delderfield, please. Yes, I'm present. Uh, Councillor Ellington. Yes, I'm here. Councillor Handley. I'm here. Councillor McDonald. Yes, present. And uh, Councillor Hales, obviously, we're aware that you're present. And uh, Councillor John Williams, the uh, lead cabinet member for finance, is also yes. in attendance at the meeting. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Aaron. Could you also do me a favour with regards to the officers who are present, whether they're visual or otherwise, so that people know? Uh, of course. So um, we have my colleague Jonathan Moulton in the background who will be doing the uh, streaming of this meeting today. Um, there's myself, I'm Democratic Services Officer for the meeting and I'll be clerking proceedings. And then we have the officer presenting the report for today, uh, Leslie McFarlane. Thank you very much. Members, does anyone have any uh, declarations of interest? Yes. Uh, Councillor Ellington. Uh, I, I need to declare that I'm a trustee for Care Network. Thank you, Aaron, if you can make a note of that, much obliged. Thank you, Chair. Um, moving on then, uh, we're going to go to the uh, the agenda on page one, go through the minutes of the last meeting, the 31st of July. Um, as usual, we'll just go through by the page. Could you just sing out, please, uh, if you have anything to, to raise? So it's uh, page one, page two, page three, and page four. If everybody's happy, would you, oh sorry, Sue, would you mind? Thank you. You're, you're, Sue, you're on mute, my love. Uh, sorry, I'm happy uh, with the minutes, except I would like to ask if if there's been a change of typeface for uh, the um, document, because it does seem uh, that we've got slightly larger type, which doesn't fit into the channels and it makes it extremely difficult to read sensibly. We, um, sorry Chair, if, uh, don't, if you don't mind me answering right. that. Um, so yes, there has been an increase in the typeface that is to meet the new accessibility regulations and uh, we're currently seeking some assistance from ModGov to alter the templates that we have on our business application so that it all fits together a little bit nicer than it does currently. So uh, apologies to members for that, but uh, it has been an increase in typeface. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, other than that, members, you're happy for me to have these signed off as a, an accurate record? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, the, uh, the only agenda item today is the service support grants 12 month update. Uh, 2019 stroke 20. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Leslie if she would like to introduce this and, and run it through, and then members, if you've got questions for Leslie and my head, that'd be great. Thank you. Leslie, over to you. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, this uh, report um, presents the delivery of outcomes of the grants that we award to the voluntary sector. So uh, grants are awarded uh, over a three year contract. And what we do is we ask um, those recipients to report on an annual basis. So the uh, this report is um, reporting back on year one. So the first year of those three years. So from um, April 2019 to March 2020. Members. Do we have any questions for Leslie? Um, whole report or for? for uh, as you wish, Councillor Linton, as you wish. It's a uh, free floor. Um, I, I, Carry on, please, yeah. 
uh, I wanted to just raise the issue around service support grant um, for arts and minds, which clearly have only uh, reached three South Cam's residents. Um, and I just felt that that was um, not really uh, very adequate. And also with the COPE uh, by monthly magazine has only reached six South Cam's residents. And I just felt that maybe the effort wasn't um, directed towards South Cam's. So um, the Arts and Minds, if I can address the Arts and Minds query. So they've had a change of uh, leadership um, in the last six months. Um, so I queried this with them because what we ask is for a minimum of South, uh, seven South Cam's residents uh, with an aspirational target of 21. Now, what happens is the money that we award them, which is I think we give them £2,500 a year, that covers the cost of one course. So what the new uh, CEO reported on was the number of South Cam's residents that attended that one course that we uh, funded. But in actual fact, 11 South Cam's residents have attended a number of courses that have been put on by Arts and Minds, but she only reported on the one that we, we funded. So I queried that. And I think in previous years, um, the CEO reported the number of South Cam's residents in total. So it may look on the face of it that only three attended, but there were 11, which is more than the minimum seven that we would um, that we've we've set as their target. So I hope that clears that one up. That makes more sense. Yeah. And the number of copies of bi-monthly magazines circulated in South Cams, that, sorry, is probably a misunderstanding in, in how you've interpreted that. So there were six magazines uh, that were um, published this year. So it's bi-monthly, so every other month. So they did their six magazines and they would have reached the number of South Cam's residents, so 797. Sense. <laughs> yes, my interpretation okay? of the English, right. Fine. Are you okay there? You okay there with that, Sue? Yeah. Yeah. Thank I, you. That, Claire. Yeah. Thank you. Um. Yes. I mean, I I had similar um sort of thoughts on the arts and minds, and I seem to remember us discussing this a year ago or whenever the last time that we looked at it, and and reading their report. I mean, the sort of work that they do is is obviously really good and and valuable to the people who receive it and re really helps them but it is quite expensive per person um and it was just to sort of think about to think about that for the future really um you know two and a half thousand pounds for reaching 11 people compared with some of the other um things that we're funding which reach a great much greater number of people um so it was just to kind of to think about that um, and I kind of it, value for money is perhaps the wrong phrase <laughs> because obviously it has a huge impact on the people that the money money goes to um, and, and receives but um, yeah just just sort of thinking about that in the context of the other um, grants that we give really. Okay. Thank you Bill. Uh, thank you this is just, just just curious, um, I noticed that the budget for all of the categories uh, remains the same across years, except for category eight, where it rises by 1% per annum. I just wondered why that's different from the rest. Mm, let me just go down to category eight. Guys, could I ask a favour? Could you give us the page number you're looking at when you... you, you make yeah, that? sorry. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm a little bit hands off on the housing and homelessness um, uh, service support grants. This is handled by Heather Wood um, in housing. So unfortunately, I can't answer that question now, uh, but I can get back to you on that. I, I mean, I'm, I'm all in favour of it rising by 1%. And probably the better better way of putting the question is that why don't the why aren't the others increased by 1%? 
I think we, Maybe what, that's what happens, the job. <laughs> yeah, we're given a finite budget, you know, every, um, at the at the end of the, that three year period. And I think we, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's been the same amount. Yeah, OK. I suppose that, that is a question for John, actually, Bill. Um, yes. Uh, John, we are. Well, we are, if you if if if. Um, you would like to, uh, Bill, I mean, if you, you and your team would like to put a bid in to yeah. increase the amount um, in the budget, then obviously that will be considered. OK, we'll take that offline. Thanks, John. I, I was going to say, because on top of that, I'll come to you in a sec, Pete, and just on top of that is the fact that we've got the mobile warden schemes and they're going over to um, long term processes like this. So we're going to get guaranteed funding for a period. So again, we're going to need to reflect the, the cost of living and what have you rising each year. So there, there may well be issues to con concern there as well, John. Uh, Peter first, then Claire again, please. I, I, I may, uh, Chair, it may be better to take it later. It's a question around citizens' advice. OK. Do you want to take it now or later on? As, as, you, as you wish, really. Um, I mean, the work that they're doing, uh, first, first of all, this, this is our largest single expenditure. Um, uh, I think the work they're doing is invaluable. There are obvious questions in our minds now um, about how, two, two things. First of all, how they're going to be able to service the community, um, because in the past, a lot of that has been face to face. Um, I, I notice on the report that, you know, they have they have web chat. Uh, obviously by telephone and other things. Um, and uh, so I'm just, uh, it, it's maybe a follow up action after this, not not a criticism at all in the report, which is a very good report um, uh, to say, how are they going to be able to deliver it? Will, will the numbers fall significantly um, as a result of not being able to do a face to face interaction? I, I don't know. Uh, it's a question. Um, and, you know, citizens advice, we, we can see from what's in here and as a result of COVID and potential unemployment situations, their, their work is potentially going to in, increase exponentially. What page are you on? Uh, just generally from page 24, Sue. Thanks. I couldn't find the relevant charts you were looking at. That's it. Could I come in, please? On, on I was going to sort of comment on a very similar thing, actually, which is on page 28, they they comment that they've adapted their services and now continuing to help even more people without real face to face work. Um, and that, that's really good. But it, I, I think I, I agree with Peter. It it would be good to know what even more people means in terms of not how many more. And um, yeah, and, and understand a bit more about the pressures that they're now under um, because I think you know it's clear even in this report given the dates that this report was written that their their uh, work has gone up considerably from the previous year um, which is it's good to see that it's reaching more people but obviously concerned to make sure that they can deliver um, the services that we need them to so just similar similar comments to to Peter um, but re a really good report and um, really good to read some of the case studies showing the real impact of, of their support on, on people within the community. Thank you. All right, anybody else? Oh, sorry, carry on. It would seem to me that this is something we will need to come back to to look at how well uh, they are able to respond to all the needs that they're going to have to respond to following COVID and as a result of COVID. It seems to me it is the service that is probably the most useful for for the general public who have, have fallen into um, uh, arrears with their rents or, or whatever. I, I just think that we may need to think about doing them more. Well, on that note, Sue, um, uh, Leslie, I, I, I wonder the the extension to the landlords not chucking you out uh, offered by government runs out on the 20th of September, I think, is it on 19th, something like that? Mid-September, so. Um, 
but then of course the uh, furlough scheme ends at the end of October so there is the speculation that um, lots of companies may well be shedding staff but if they do that they may be on monthly contracts which means at the end of September there should likely be could likely be uh, a a large increase in people knowing they're going to be able to work in a month's time. So that might be something that we would uh, perhaps like the uh, CAB to comment on as how they're going to manage that. Uh, John. You're on mute, John. Right, just to say that the um, government's extended um, the um, ability for for, for landlords not to evict tenants for another six months. So is it six months? Six oh, months. Oh, that's right. Okay. So um, uh, fortunately, that that's not an issue. But you're you're quite right. Um, when the furlough scheme um, comes to an end, um, I think many people will find themselves um, um, released from their employment. OK, well, there is another side to this um, landlords not not evicting people is that a lot of landlords have these as businesses uh, without their thing. So you could argue that is there a slightly further up the food chain issue that will the landlords come be coming to the CAB to ask advice? So that would be interesting to know because that would have an impact on us, because if people are going to be made homeless, then our teams within South Campton, the homeless teams are going to be inundated potentially with people saying, Get me emergency housing. So I think there's a there is a need actually for as as Claire and Peter both rightly say that that there could be a slightly more detailed look at specifics, if you like, as as to what's about to happen in the future from their, their point of view. Um, anybody else got some, some points on this? Is that's quite a, a real interesting one, isn't it? I think uh, and sad, Claire. Yeah, just uh, the last thing on citizens' advice, and um, I think thought it was useful seeing um, where they bolded this year in the report this year's versus last year's um, cases. But the issues table on page 25, which shows the number of clients that have gone to them advice for different things, it would be quite useful to actually see the year-on-year -year change on that, and um, uh, if if you know where where people are, are are wanting help and that's i guess going to be particularly critical over the next few months and, and the next 12 months or so claire, so would just you, comment on that claire would it be helpful with, now you've raised that would it be helpful that a lot of this is going to be based around covid i think at the moment isn't it certainly for this year and into next right and the effects that that's going to be causing um society so to speak would it be helpful to have a a month by month look or figures to see how it how it ramps up. I mean, it's OK saying it for the year, but that's a whole year and it takes in six months of us going through um, what we've been through recently. And, you know, I just wonder if that would be helpful if it's doable. You might be asking already overwrought staff um, for additional work there, uh, Joe, yeah, but I can okay. certainly um, I can request it. Sure. I would, have, I would have thought they must have the data on a spreadsheet somewhere. Just, you know. So uh, the, the thing is, what are we going to do with the information when we've got it? Because unless we've we've got a plan that enables us to tweak things or help things, we're we're putting staff under extra pressure for no real gain is it my, my only uh, concern. Yeah, I, I would only be really looking for data that was already available, but <laughs> rather than asking them to do something new. Right. Anybody else got any questions? Peter's had his hand up for a long time. Has he? Oh yeah, sorry Pete. No, oh, I uh, actually, I didn't lower it, but I do have another point, so <laughs> that's good. <laughs> okay. um, uh, they, do, they do, of course, have uh, an office in Camborne. I wonder whether, uh, well, uh, I, I would suggest, uh, just a suggestion with Leslie, is uh, 
we, uh, some members of the committee have an informal call with them and see what help we can give them in the short term. Um, uh, the, uh, as, as was mentioned, uh, we, they are producing very good reports and we're getting those, um, you know, periodically. I, I think it's such an exceptional uh, situation at the moment. It may be worth having an informal call and, and working out what else we can do in the community to support them. Of course. I would agree with that. And um, as the new lead member for health and wellbeing, I think I probably should be involved. Um, could I just say as well, I, I had a, a quite a long conversation with Mark Freeman from CCVS um, and CCVS represent all the charities. Um, and what he had said was that um, the bigger charities are suffering more uh, due to reduction in sort of funding opportunities and because a lot of their shops have closed, whereas the smaller charities seem to be sort of either adapting or they've, they've just gone dormant. But really his point was that there's lots of extra money being handed out at the moment in the form of emergency funding. Um, but this often has a six month deadline. But actually, the so for the next six months, you know, the, the the charities will probably be able to keep their heads above water but it's thereafter it's that it's the day-to-day -day funding not just the emergency funding that i think is critical um just to see some of these organizations you know continue to to offer the services that they are they've been offering through this period brilliant john can you take your hand down and take your arm doesn't thank you yeah, yeah thank Thanks. Um, I've got a question on the community network, if I may. Um, we'll we've, had dis we've had discussions about um, their their area of operation in the past. And um, what I am quite interested in seeing is that clearly they use Cambridge Dialeride for a lot of their their work. Now we don't support Cambridge Dialeride mm. right, um, for um, some very good reasons. So where are we on the due diligence on this that they are using um, a service that we ourselves are not happy in supporting? John, can I just ask what, what page refers oh, to? Oh, sorry, this is page 67. Thank you, John. Sorry, apologies. That's OK. Yes. I wonder whether we need to we need to look at this. I, I mean, clearly. Um, I, I, you know, I have no problem uh, with them using Cambridge Dialer Ride, right, but the, given the fact that we ourselves won't support Cambridge Dialer right, uh, because they aren't able to satisfy our, our requirements in which in regard of due diligence, um, are we happy that voluntary network are using them on our behalf? That's all I'm asking. I, I, maybe we ought to. We not. We need to look at that. Could I just clarify? Actually, page sixty-five, because that was a question I had. It doesn't have a heading on there. Is that because um, page sixty-three is the voice to the community transport? Page sixty-five. I don't have a. Does that refer to the voluntary network? I'm just. It's not clear, is it? No. And so I, when I was reading the report, I I was querying what that referred to. Yeah, that is the voluntary it says, network. It says, yeah, I've just said on the on the following yeah. page, it does yeah. say the voluntary network, but just it was a bit confusing reading the report. <laughs> On the uh, on the the second box down on page 65, um, where it says they have uh, actively promote the transport service, blah blah blah. The bullet which says uh, contact with the GPS and other support services look like they're in global positioning rather than GPs. I assume they mean. Anyway, so Leslie, could yeah. we just look into that? I, I yeah. will, yeah. Um, Joseph, could I raise a different yeah. 
Beery, which is in relation to the report, page 45 re report for, for COPE, um, the Old People's Enterprise. Um, in the first paragraph, it, it talks about the fact that um, they've had a lot of their volunteers and the committee have had to self isolate and um, pretty much kind of shut down. And I was just really asking, do we have any idea um, about how they're going to proceed and cope and, and what they cope as a bit of a <laughs> obviously how, how they're going to manage um going forward because obviously that isn't it that is concerning for them um yeah i don't know if, um whether there was any further information on that or or could we check in with them um leslie i think was the, the point yeah. really to, to yeah. see how they're being impacted and and what their thoughts are for how they're going to make sure um, they can provide the support that they have in the past. I yeah, I had made contact with all of them. Not all of them had got back to me, so I think Cope was one of those that hadn't uh, responded. Yeah, but I'll follow up. Particularly because looking at a lots of the you know social events has been a big and outings have been big aspects of their work, and obviously they're going to be things that are big really impacted and um, whether they have the capacity to offer alternative <laughs> alternative <laughs> things or whether they can be signed their clients can be signposted to other I don't know but it's just it just was an area of concern it's actually I think sometimes these are uh, a lack of information a lack of understanding of the, the law as it stands at the moment with regards to uh, numbers of people that can get together um, as well as not having a plan in place. I was speaking with a gentleman who's uh, yesterday actually with regards to hearing help and hearing help and they've been very forthright in how they've got their, their plan and their, their new uh, processes to comply with um, uh, uh, checking their workers and what have you who are in the same age group generally as the coach people so it, it's probably a good idea if, if some of these organisations talk to each other, they may be able to help each other out in that, in that matter. And I'm, I think I was just very conscious that, you know, a lot of the work that COPE have done is about addressing loneliness. And obviously that's something that's much going to be much more exposed to people at the moment. Um, yeah, it sort of brings it home, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. OK. Any more for any more, guys? Um, can, can I just raise something on uh, the Farmland Museum chair? Yeah, please do. Um, uh, so going back to Leslie's comment, I, I mean, this is probably uh, arguably the one that's impacted more than anybody because it's it, it's a site for visitors. Um, so I, re you know, they've been doing uh, a great job. So those provisional numbers, 7,800 for 2019, uh, you know, they've been around the 8,000 mark. I mean, that's going to have collapsed. So um, again, I think it may be an informal conversation with the, or, or call with the trustees to say, can we help them in terms of bouncing back um, when 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 it's time? Leslie, go ahead. Go There's ahead. some good news. So uh, yesterday, I just so happened to read in the paper that they were successful in um, winning the or, or getting their lottery heritage lottery funding funding, Fantastic. which was about twenty eight thousand six hundred pounds. So they actually reopened their doors yesterday. Fantastic. Um, so they've certainly things are looking be you know, much better for them, uh, at least to, uh, from now until to the end of the year. Fantastic. That's great. Again, the trick is to diversify. Um, I, I've not been sadly to the to the venue. I'm sure that some of my colleagues have. What kind of space do they have? I mean, they have a cafe, which is obviously going to be a big earner if it's being used. There are very good examples. I can put you in touch with one that is very close to my heart as to how they are working to allow the cafe to operate under COVID restrictions and doing very nicely. Thank you very much. So 
I think these are some of the things where it's, it's imparting information to others. If they don't have the confidence or they feel they don't know the information, ask. And this might be something where uh, our officers, Leslie, might be able to glean some information from others to say, you need to talk to such and such, or actually they're doing it like this. And that, you know, that we do need to, to assist as many people as we yeah. can to get back on their feet, but they do need to be able to understand what they can and can't do. Uh, Claire. Thank you. Um, there was a, a, something that very much sort of jumped out of the report to me when I was reading it was um, page 18 reading um, about Cambridge Women's Aid. Um, and I, I was just you know, thinking about, you know, they, they received sort of just over eight and a half thousand pounds in, in the category eight um, housing homelessness in, in that um, for that year. Um, and it was just very conscious of the number of people who've been supported, which is really both stressing and good to see that they are being supported. Um, but really very aware of the fact that we know from all the coverage that there's been a real impact in people who've been suffering domestic violence um, and domestic abuse during COVID. And so two things really. One is um, have they locally seen numbers rising and do we have capacity to give more um, or think about how we move our support into areas that are going to be really needed in the future? That was really what I was thinking about. OK, now so I don't need to investigate. Yeah. Yeah. So you, but you haven't had anything, uh, any recent information from them about. Yeah, no, I mean, I it'd, be good to, it'd be useful to hear um, what impact they have seen in terms of the number of people calling on them. I think that would be great to, to have that information back next year and just just flags me something that we need to think about um, because it is all about not just supporting people but pre preventing homelessness and that sort of yeah. those aspects. Claire, can you take your hand down? Guys, when, you've, when you're called to speak, take your hand down there. Right, just yeah. quickly on that note, uh, Leslie, on page 19, um, after following on from what Claire has just said, I'm coming to you in a second, by the way, so um, in bold, it says the state is about the funding, uh, the annual grants paid out and then in 2020-21 is scheduled for August of this year, that payment. Has that been made yet? Again, I, would, I need to check. Because that's going to be integral for these, these, these yeah. organisations in being able to carry on, frankly, without having to worry whether or not their payment a week later or whatever. So, John, do you have any information on when they might be paid? It says August. I'm assuming that's the end of August. It seems that today is more or less the end of August. You're on mute again, John. Uh, apologies, Joe. So I, I, sorry, I got interrupted by another another call. What, what it, was the question? It, it's on page 19. Are in the the bold status paragraph, the last piece on page 19, where it talks about the funding for the 2021 financial year being made in August of this year, as to whether or not that's been made, and at what point in August is it going to be made? Um, I have no reason not to think it's um, it, it won't be made on time. Um, I, I've not been been told otherwise. Um, certainly, oh. check we've. With um, with the head of finance, but um, I don't um, don't see any reason why it won't be paid. Thank you. We'll probably leave that to Leslie. I think anyway. Yeah. Um, Sue, take your hand down, please, and uh, carry on. Uh, following on from Claire, what Claire was saying about um, trying to support those organisations which are particularly affected by COVID, um, it does come back to what we. Claire and I both started at the beginning with, which was bang for buck, really, and and trying to make sure that our resources are aimed at the most vulnerable and and where they will do the most for the most number of people. And and I think that we have to ask officers to just help us find our way through. Thank you. That's another one for your list then, Leslie. Yes, it is. 
Okay, guys, has anyone got any more questions on any of the different sections that are in this terrific report? And I have to say, I'd just like to echo what other people have said, Leslie. Um, it's a lovely report. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. If, if it's entirely your own work, lined up. If it's not, <laughs> Could you pass on our thanks to everybody <laughs> else as well? <laughs> Thank you, Jace. I'm sure Entirely it's, mine. Uh, then, then it's 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 well, it's beyond words. Thank you. <laughs> um, has, has anyone else got any any comments? I mean, Leslie's got a list to go away and do. Um, how would we like to play this? Would we like um, Leslie, if she's kind enough, to email us out? Um, Reason I've come up on the screen. Um, email us out with the answers and what have you, and then that generates some questions for the next meeting. Or would you like to have those answers in the report uh, and that we bring to another meeting? I'm in your hands, as well as Leslie's. So, um, personally, I'd be quite comfortable for some of those things to come back as um, just reported for the next meeting. But okay, so. I think we're in such a fluid situation at the moment that um, we may like to have a, an ongoing email if, if there's anything that really needs us to think about quicker than waiting for the next meeting. All right, uh, guys, Peter, Bill or John? Yes, I, I, I agree with what, what Sue says. It's so fluid that um, trying to set out to I think we need to be responsive. Yeah. Um, so some of these organisations will have more problems more quickly than others. Um, and, and I think we just need to be um, uh, obviously keep the lines of communication through Leslie and the other officers open. And then, you know, we may have to um, have have a separate, whether it's a formal or informal uh, discussion with them, uh, depending on how they're getting on. And the, and the needs that they have may be slightly different over the next three to six months. Yeah, yeah I think obviously some of the organisations are going to need closer attention, particularly like with the conversation we were having about Citizens Advice Bureau, etc. Um, and the one we've just had about um, with the Women's Aid. Um, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they definitely need a, clo a close eye kept, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with everything that's been said. John, uh, Bill? Yeah, I well, e email would be best for me, but I, I think it's clear that um, I need to speak with Leslie and Gareth and um, maybe review what, what we are doing, uh, priorities and so on. Um, I, I think that would be, a, it's a good time to do that in the light of COVID. Should we, should we, should we uh, then ask Leslie if she's kind of to do um, the email process yeah. at the moment for, you know, blow by blow update, if you like. Yeah. And then perhaps when we get a month or two further on, when we get really into the thick of it with regards to uh, furlough finishing and et cetera, et cetera, perhaps a, a one or two pager which can sum it up at one of the meetings uh, towards that point there. If that's if that's OK with you, Bill, as lead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Leslie, yeah. OK, guys, thanks. Right, so we've got, if there's no other questions on the other, or, or comments and bits and pieces on the, the agenda itself, I'm looking and that looks like a no. Leslie, do you have anything to, to sum up with? Um, only in that um, I think it, it, we're, you know, the, the charities that we're working with, they're all doing a fantastic job, but they're going through a tremendous amount of turmoil and uncertainty at the moment. And I think um, our support, wherever we can give it, would be greatly appreciated because they do do a fantastic job in terms of kind of covering off everything that we kind of represent as a local authority in terms of health and well-being and those wider determinants of health um, and just really supporting the residents you know in in a very in very exceptional circumstances everybody's under a great deal of pressure at the moment so if we can help in any way then i think that will be a great thing thank you very much peter um it, it's not for today but um as part of the discretionary grant process, we have made awards to 23 charities. Um, so uh, what I think we should do is um, at the next meeting, just say, um, you, you know, do we know do we know where that was 
where and how that was spent and how does that support financial support which is substantial how does that uh, integrate with what we're doing what we've done here Be because those are uh, if you like one-off grants on the basis of the discretionary rules and what we have here is ongoing uh, funding for a number of organizations um, and, and hopefully all of that money, the 23 that we've made awards to, you know, it's going to help them considerably. I think it'd be nice just to see that alongside um, what we're doing here. Thank you. That sounds a really, really, really helpful suggestion, Peter. OK, guys, page nine, top of it, options, grants committee could. Number one, note the delivery of all grant programmes within the scope of this report and agree that all are on track as per officer opinion and or number two, highlight any concerns for further investigation or actions given reasons and requests that a follow up report be returned to get within appropriate time cells. I think that we've managed to go to number two, really, give and take that. So, um, Aaron, are we are we um, safe, if you like, to just to say that we are essentially doing number two? Um, with this option, you know, option two of the two options on page nine, or would you like us to formally accept it number two? Uh, uh, I mean, it doesn't need to be a roll call. Um, you know, uh, certainly just sort of acclama acclamation of the of the committee would be uh, okay. wonderful. Guys, if you uh, could you just put your hand up physically, by that, that you're accepting that, uh, Bill. I would. Whilst you're not a member of this committee as the lead, are you are you accepting that we accept number two as well? Well, I can accept number two, but it looks to me as if actually we we might be able to accept both. I don't think they're binary. It's not binary, is it? No. Um, no. So it says it says and or. Um, we we I think it's an excellent report. I agree with you on that, Joe. And but there are concerns not, not not related directly to the report but you know the fact that we need to look at the various components and see if there's great we can we can offer greater help and support so i actually think both of them apply okay so we're, we're looking at one and two with an update then <laughs> <laughs> okay sorry Sorry. No, no, please don't. I mean, this is what it's all about. I'm, and I'm, 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 I'm easy either way. Whatever you guys think is what we do. So that's fantastic. So um, on that basis, then, uh, Aaron, it's a one and a two with an update, please. Leslie, you got the message anyway, and you've got this <laughs> as long as you're on. Um, and uh, so members of the public who are watching, uh, this is the end of this particular meeting. Our next meeting is on the 25th of September, Friday, 25th September. Uh, I believe it to be 10 o'clock, Aaron, if that's correct. It is. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming along this morning. It's lovely. It's a terrific meeting. Um, and again, thank you to officers. Thank you, Leslie, for the for the uh, the report. Superb. And thank you to Aaron and Jonathan in the background there for keeping the meeting running smoothly and looking at all our smiley faces. So on that note, if there's nothing else, I would like to say au revoir and uh, see you at the next one, if not yeah. before. Thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you, you very much indeed. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, Bye. Thanks, everyone. Are we now offline, Aaron? Uh, Jonathan, could you confirm that? He'll be with us in a sec. Jonathan? Sorry, it's no uh, my laptop being a bit slow. Um, yeah, I'm just cancelling the live stream. Do apologise. That's okay, darling. No sweat. <laughs>